and everybody today we're going to be doing a video on how to witness to uh, people that are unbelievers notice I'm not saying non-believers I'm saying unbelievers there's a difference I don't believe there's any non-believers I believe there's people that are unbelievers we'll talk about that and our motorcycle of choice today is the wonderful high-speed racing bike the beautiful Yamaha R1 so let's get on we'll be getting on the uh, the roads and then we're gonna get on some high-speed freeways here we go all right here we go guys thanks for joining us again so why do we call them unbelievers and not non-believers and then we're going to get into how to witness to unbelievers how to witness to them each person's different you know each person has a different personality and everything however we basically do it the same uh, we believe that the Word of God does have power and so there really is no trick to it the word has power you just preach the word but let's talk about why we why do we call them unbelievers not non-believers scripture says that all know that God exists but they have unbelief which means they choose not to believe now if you go to the uh, very first page of Romans in Scripture read the first and the second page of Romans and that's towards the back of the book middle back if you're if you have an old and New Testament combined and you'll notice that it says that indeed they do know that God exists but they suppress the truth in their unrighteousness and what that means I'd like to use the analogy you heard it before if you've seen our videos if you ever get like a basketball and you try to put it under water like in the swimming pool if you let go of it it pops back up so you have to suppress it don't you you have to hold that basketball down and suppress it and scripture says that that's what the unbeliever hold on I'm gonna have to downshift it that's what the unbeliever is doing with the Word of God now before we get into how to witness you know there's a very big problem uh, in the atheist community you ever notice that the atheist community attracts wimpy I, I mean I'm not attacking anyone personally but let's be honest atheists are pretty wimpy <laughs> they're wimps and I'm going to tell you why atheists are wimps. Um, and, and I'll give you some examples. One time I challenged Cult of Dusty to a debate. And I've done well over 50, 60, 70 debates. And I'll put a link of debates that I've had uh, right below this video so you can hear me in debate. And Cult of Dusty is that guy, he kind of... Um, you remember the Rockford Files? It was sort of like James Rockford's uh, sidekick, like he would give him information. He reminds me of that guy in the Rockford Files. But Cult of Dusty is one of those loudmouth dodo bird atheists. And I challenged him to a debate, and we actually had the debate scheduled. And he came in the debate room and he was like, oh, I can't get my microphone working. Well, it works all the time when he's doing videos. It's funny that these atheists that are supposed to be into science can't get their microphone working. So, anyhow, um, but atheism attracts wimps. And I'm going to tell you why atheism attracts wimps. And I have to go left here, actually. I'm just noticing something here. I think I can, uh, it was like green for like a second. I was gonna like gun it. 
So I've noticed that, unless you're a kid, if you're a kid and you're an atheist, I don't mean this for you, okay? Because you're still a kid and you don't know any better. So a lot of kids are atheists. So if you're like, let's say, 16, 17 or you know, younger, 18 or younger, you're just a kid. This video, what I'm gonna tell you, does not apply to you um, as far as me labeling the atheists as wimps. But here's why atheists tend to be wimps. You ever notice that? Um, like, for ex let me give you some other wimpy examples. We challenge the atheist experience show to provide some type of proof and evidence that atheism is accurate and correct, and they evaded the question. Watch that video right below this video. I'll put the link there. You can hear me, yours truly, very humbly speaking as I bow my head to the ground, calling up atheist radio shows and asking them the same question. What proof and evidence do you have that proves atheism is accurate and correct? And they run from it. They're like little, one time I'm driving by here and you see these little bunnies and stuff. They're like little bunnies like you see in the field that run into their little bunny hole when you ask them that question. They hate that question. We've asked that question in atheist forums and they've actually banned the question from ever being asked. It, it puts the fear of God into them. Here we go, all right, get some cool air into this beast. So what happens is, let's say you are a weak person you don't have, let's say you don't have any education on Christianity, but you're going around saying you're a Christian, and you have low self-esteem, let's say that's another problem, and an atheist comes up to you and starts talking about the magic man in the sky. I do uh, recommend reading that book, by the way. There's a book called Ma The Magic Man in the Sky, excellent book. It talks about the madness of atheism. But uh, the atheists are mocking this person, let's say they're a new Christian, and that new Christian or that new theist or the person that's searching for truth and what to, uh, what worldview to gravitate towards, if they don't have education in Christianity, and this is why we're doing this video, if they don't have answers like scripture says always be prepared to give someone an answer who asks they're going to fall away and these wimpy people become atheists that's why atheism's full of these wimpy people because how do atheists recruit people into atheism they don't do it by using reason or logic they do it by ridicule They'll say, uh, they'll talk about how God is Santa Claus or whatever. They'll bring that up. Um, well, do you believe in Santa Claus? You know, they'll bring all these examples up. Uh, do you believe in the magic man in the sky and all this? And a weak person that is a wimp will become an atheist because they don't like their widow feelings being hurt. It's hurting their widow feelings. So they join the mob, the atheist mob, and they become an atheist. This is why when you ask the atheist community what proof and evidence do you have that proves atheism is accurate and correct, they don't like it. It reminds them of how they have to give evidence for their worldview. They thought they could be an atheist and escape using their brain. But now we're asking them to use their brain when we ask them what proof and evidence can you provide that would prove at last, for heaven's sakes, would you please answer that question, my atheist friend? that would prove that atheism is accurate and correct. That's why the atheists don't like it, because they're a bunch of wimps. I'm just, this isn't a personal attack, but we all know the atheist community is full of wimps. Aaron Raw, wimp. Thunderfoot, wimp. The amazing atheist, or as I call him, the amazingly hellbound atheist, wimp. Now, the most wimpiest wimpity wimp wimp, wimp 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 wimp, 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 of all, when you think wimp in the atheist community, who do you think of? That's right, Richard Dawkins. Shock, I don't really appreciate you talking disrespectful. Shut up, Dawkins. 
go back in your little bunny hole. I just think it's disrespectful that you talk about, oh, shut up. Let's see, the guy gives me the arm thing. He did. All right. Dawkins is afraid to debate on a one-on-one -on -one debate. The number one Christian debater on the debate circuit, Dr. William Lane Craig. And Dr. William Lane Craig is begging to, ba to debate Richard Dawkins. He's begging to, be to debate him. <laughs> begging to debate. Say that ten times fast. He's begging to debate. Richard Dawkins. Well, I already told you I'm a little bit scared to debate Dr. William Lane Craig. You whip, Richard Dawkins. So, this is why, remember, when you're witnessing to atheists, you're basically witnessing to a wimp. You don't want to tell them that, because you're not going to win any souls telling them they're a wimp. But, you know, for the sake of YouTube, and I know some atheists are going to watch this, but atheism is designed, it's, you need to know this, that atheism is designed to attract wimps. The only people that would ever say, oh, okay, I'll be an atheist, are people that are wimps and they don't like to get their little feelings hurt. Those of you that are still Christians, you have a spine of steel. You are confident and bold in your Christianity. You ever notice some of these wimps that uh, say they're a Christian and then they become an atheist, then they go to Mormonism. And then they go to this, and then they go to that. And they're, because whatever person just mocks them, they'll move from one worldview to another, and that person is of no use to the body of Christ. They need to be firm and put their, uh, their feet on the solid rock of truth. So let's talk about how you witness. Sometimes if I'm witnessing to someone and they say they're an atheist, I, you know, I want to get their attention. So <laughs> some of this is going to be a joke, so don't be offended. But I want to get their attention. And so I'll say, hey, well, did you know it mentions atheist in the Bible? And I'll turn to Genesis where God tells Abraham to go up to this mountain. And it says right there in Genesis that early in the morning, Abraham got up with his atheist, I guess he had a little atheist servant around the place, and went up to the mountain. Because the actual verbiage where you know they're talking about an atheist is it says an Abra Abraham, excuse me, got up early in the morning. Abraham got up early in the morning with his ass, A-S-S. So right there, that is the first mention of an atheist in the Bible. And I, you know, it's hard to find positive mentions of atheists in the Bible. There's another mention of an atheist in the Bible where um, scripture says a fool says within their heart there is no God. So, you know, It's hard to uh, talk about atheism in a positive light when you're witnessing to people. But all joking aside, there is an epic passage that does reach out to atheists and everybody, Muslims, Hindus, Buddhists, Catholics. It reaches out to everyone. The scripture where God says, look, come let us reason. I know the thoughts that I think of you, thoughts of peace, that you would have an expected end. It talks about, it's like God pleading with you, you know, with the unbeliever, you know, be reasonable, use logic. So let's go through some things. You've heard this, if you've seen some of my videos, I really like it. If someone says, well, why are you a Christian? You say, you know, I really do believe that Jesus Christ is alive. And one of the problems that I see with, you know, Christians that become a Christian and they go to church and they want to witness to other people, but they've never been taught how to do it. And some pastors, I've, I've heard them, they'll get up there and they'll say, look, you need to preach the gospel. You need to do this. And of course, the Christian has a good heart where they want to preach the gospel. 
but they don't know how. The poor things don't know how to preach it. And I'm going to be brutally honest here. If you don't have the confidence to preach it, it's embarrassing sometimes. You don't know what to say, especially if the person's a stranger. So I'm going to give you something. You can memorize it. Favorite this video if you're a Christian. Click share below this video. Send this to your Christian friends. And remember the word alive a-l-i-v-e if you can remember the word alive you could actually share the gospel with someone in a non-embarrassing way a rational way a way that makes sense remember a-l-i-v-e we're going to go through each letter a stands for the appearances this is why we believe jesus christ is alive don't you guys find it amazing that all these people said that they saw Jesus Christ alive. Now recently Christopher Hitchens died. You don't hear anyone saying that they saw Christopher Hitchens alive. You don't hear that. In fact, when you click below this video, you'll see a debate that Christopher Hitchens was in when he was asked to provide proof and evidence that would show atheism is accurate and correct, and he didn't have any. You'll see it right there, right below this video. So, you don't hear people saying Christopher Hitchens is alive. You don't hear people saying Stalin, who was an atheist that murdered millions upon millions of people. You don't hear people saying that he's alive. Maybe his teachings are still alive in the Democrat Party here in the United States, but you don't hear him saying that he's alive. So A is for the appearances. You gotta admit, everyone, even if you're a Muslim, whatever you are, you have to admit that historically there are people that even were willing to die for the claim. Wow, look at this guy. That they saw Jesus alive after his crucifixion. A lot of them. Scripture says that over 5,000 people witnessed him alive again, which explains pretty much the success of Christianity being the number one largest force for good in the world, number one religion, if you want to call it that. So, don't you find it amazing of all these appearances? I find it absolutely amazing. And what's good is when you bring up these things, it branches off like a family tree. It branches off into different conversations. So you'll find the conversation with the unbeliever will flow. They'll say, well, what about if the people hallucinated? Really? 5,000 people hallucinated? Even enemies of Jesus Christ? That, that'd be a bigger miracle than... Jesus Christ uh, coming back from the dead. And remember, if they say they don't believe that Jesus could come back from the dead, a good argument is, well, that's what atheists believe, for example, that from non-life, we have life. That's what atheists believe. Then it's easier for me to believe that someone that claimed to be the Son of God resurrected. If you already believe that from non-life, life can appear, it's easier to believe that someone that was living can live on than something that was never living can live. So the atheist actually believes something that goes against science. We've never seen non-life create life at all. You can't prove it scientifically. It has never been proven scientifically that non-life can create life. And I know that people are going to point to experiments where they were able to get, you know, existing life and create life from that. That's not non-life creating life. An L in the word alive is for the low status of women. After Jesus died and rose from the dead, it was the testimony of women that were the first to claim that Jesus rose from the dead. And we, we find this amazing because in that day and age, the testimony of women 
was not as credible as the testimony of men. But the reason why the men did not appear, and if you've read the Gospels, because the men were, I, I just got to be honest, they were cowards. They were scared to go because they didn't want their life to be threatened. They were scared. They just witnessed Jesus Christ murdered. They were scared of being murdered. So the fact that the women are the first at the tomb, and all the Gospels say the same thing. They do not contradict. They all claim that the women were the first at the tomb and that the men were, you know, little wussies, were chicken. Not that I blame them. I mean, who wants to die? It takes a lot of courage for that. We're going to talk about that in a moment, how they actually, after they witnessed Jesus Christ, they dramatically change and they do die for the claim that Jesus died and rose from the dead. So this low status of women and that level of embarrassment adds to the credibility of these stories that Jesus did die and rise again. V is for the voluntary suffering. Would you die for a lie? And let me ask it like this. If you knew something was a lie, would you die for it? There's lots of Christian martyrs. Where are the atheist martyrs? <laughs> Where are these atheist martyrs? Well, we all know they're wimps. So you can't really find these statues made to atheist martyrs. There might be some out there, but they're sure few and far between. So um, the voluntary suffering, do you know all the disciples chose to die for the fact that Jesus rose from the dead? Inevitably, you'll hear people say, well, what about the 911 hijackers, the 911 murderers? And by the way, if you go to shotgunout.net, you'll see Bill Maher, an atheist, praising the 911 murderers at my website. It's a video that got him fired from his show. Because he right after 911, this idiot, Bill Maher, the atheist, just an idiot, he came out and he was praising the terrorists. This is how bad Amer you know atheists tend to hate America. And he was saying the terrorists were very brave. But he he dissed the United States Army and he praised the terrorists. But anyways, a lot of people say, well, didn't the 911 murderers die for what they believe? The 911 murderers never claimed to see Mohammed raised from the dead. They never claimed that. The reason why they murdered people in New York, because they hate America. They didn't do it because they love God. They did it because they hate America and some weird Islamic teaching. But you can't compare Islam to Christianity. Two different worldviews. They actually contradict each other. So you can't get something evil that someone did where they killed people and then say the disciples who never killed people ended up um, dying for the fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. So the disciples walked with Jesus. The 911 murderers never claimed that they saw Jesus or for that matter, Muhammad die and raised from the dead. So it's the point is, would you die for a lie? The fact that all the disciples were willing to die, the only one that didn't, although he was willing, was John who, had, who penned Revelation, the, the last book in the Bible. So basically the Bible, remember, it's not just a book, it's a library. It's a collection of books. So the voluntary suffering, let's get, let's get on this a bit. The voluntary suffering adds to the credibility. You got people saying they saw Jesus alive. You have women, the first at the tomb. We know the tomb was empty. We're going to get to that because the Jews that had Jesus killed, even though Jesus was a Jew and a lot of his disciples were Jew. I'm talking about the religious Jews of that time, the top religious leaders. They were saying, well, of course the tomb is empty. They admitted the tomb was empty, but they were trying to say the disciples stole the body. So, and they were never able to prove that. So, does it make sense the disciples would steal the body 
and they loved Jesus so much that they wanted to concoct this lie that he rose from the dead and they're willing to die for it. It's so dumb that people believe that. It's more rational to believe that he really did rise from the dead and the disciples were so emboldened that they were like, I'm even willing to die for Jesus Christ. What do I got to worry about? He died. He rose from the dead. I believe it. This is why you have people that were recounting the claim that they knew Jesus Christ after the resurrection when the women said that they saw Jesus Christ and also all the disciples saw Jesus Christ, including Paul, who was murdering Christians. He saw Jesus Christ. All of them said they saw Jesus Christ and all of them, uh, with the exception of John, who God used to write Revelation, all of them ended up willingly, willingly dying for the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, my skeptic friends. Okay, so appearances, low status of women. I is for the immediate proclamation that Jesus rose from the dead. I, immediately after Jesus died and rose from the dead, they were proclaiming it in the streets that Jesus rose from the dead. V is the voluntary suffering. We talked about that. Would you die for a lie if you knew it was a lie? E is for the empty tomb. Everybody agrees. 100% of everyone watching this video believes, if you're willing to look at history and reality, that the tomb was empty of Jesus Christ, even though he was in there at one time and now he's not there. You don't need a lot of evidence to prove that the tomb is empty. All you need is proof that Jesus was in the tomb, which we have, and then proof that he wasn't. You don't need some real miraculous proof and evidence. You've heard the phrase, um, hold on a sec, miraculous claims require miraculous evidence. Powerful claims require powerful evidence. It's not true. All you got to prove is that the tomb was full and then the tomb was empty. Everyone already agrees on that. Hold on. How do we know the tomb is empty? And also, if you watch Lee Strobel's new movie, it's great. He talks about that in there, too, that the Jews that had Jesus killed admitted historically that the tomb was empty. They had to. Why? Because people were in the streets of Jerusalem, thousands of them, not a few, thousands. This guy is so nice. Thank you, brother. And they were proclaiming that Jesus Christ had risen from the dead. And I want you guys to know from the bottom of my heart, sincerely, 100%, I have absolutely no doubt that Jesus rose from the dead. I have absolutely no doubt that he is risen. Now, when you're talking to people about scripture, when you're talking to the unbeliever, realize that the word of God has power, okay? Scripture says that God's word will go out and it will accomplish what it set out to accomplish. It says his word will go out, it will not return to him void. And that's one thing when I was a new baby Christian, I had to realize that there's power in the word. It's actually powerful. Remember how the Bible starts? Remember scripture? Remember the gospels, how it says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was what? Was with God. And the word what? The word was God. So when you preach the word, it's extremely extremely powerful. I don't know if you can see this. Um, this is a military, like an old military museum of all these old World War II and Vietnam era, Vietnam era choppers, rockets, jets. 
Another thing too that, you know, as a Christian, you need to realize, if you don't mind me mentioning this, that everyone already knows that God exists. Otherwise, Jesus Christ is a liar. And Jesus is no liar. Jesus said that when he leaves the earth, that he will send the Pentecleta, which is the helper. He'll send this helper. And this helper is spiritual. And he said the helper, very windy here. Hold on, let me tuck down. This helper will convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So the Muslim has this helper that is convicting them, that is talking to them about sin, righteousness, judgment. The atheist, you can be sure of it, has the helper that Jesus sent into the world talking to them about sin, righteousness, judgment. If it wasn't for the helper in coming into the world and convicting the world of these things, nobody would be drawn to God. Nobody would be drawn to Christianity. So why did Jesus say that he's sending the helper into the world? Remember before Jesus um, had to go to the cross, he said, look, you're going to be sorrowful, sorrowful for me. You're going to weep, but your sadness will be turned to joy. That's because they saw him again. And he said, and it's better that I go. It's interesting what Jesus said. He says, it's better that I go. We got uh, Air Force Base over here, which we're going to. He said, it's better that I go because when I go, I can send the helper, which will convict the world of sin, righteousness, judgment. Sin, he said, because the people that reject him, they're under this bondage of sin. Righteousness, because I go to the Father and you shall see me no more. Judgment, and this is the good news, not judgment for you, because you're a Christian now. He says judgment because the prince of this world has been judged. It is awesome, good news. Who's the prince of this world? Satan. So just remember alive, appearances, low status of women, immediate proclamation, voluntary suffering, empty tomb notice. I had nothing up my sleeve. We're able to do all that by memory. It, you know, it'll take you about five minutes to memorize it, but it's a great um, conversation maker. It's a great icebreaker. Um, you know, if someone asks you, you know, why are you a Christian? You could say, because I believe Jesus Christ is alive. Well, what do you think an unbeliever is going to say to you about that? What's their response? When you say to them, when they ask you, well, why are you a Christian? You say, because I truly 100% believe, no doubt, that Jesus Christ is alive. They're going to say to you, take a guess. What are they going to say? What are they going to ask you? And, and then you're going to be able to open up the doors and preach to them and talk to them. They're going to say, why do you believe that? And then you go through what I just told you. Appearances, low status of women, immediate proclamation, voluntary suffering, empty tomb. It is easy. So God bless you guys. I love you guys so much. If you want to laugh and also you want to educate yourself and you want to hear me in debate, um, go below this video and you can listen to some actual debates. You can see the atheist experience show failing to prove that atheism is acting correct. You probably should call into the show and ask them that question since they never answer it. But, you know, they're wimps. They're not going to answer it. They're going to run and hide into their little, <laughs> their little bunny hole. But it's good for a laugh. Also, um, check out debates on video blogspot.com also below this video here I have got the best most entertaining debates that you have ever seen I've got debates of Richard Dawkins losing debate shock I don't know why you're telling me that I tried but shut up Dawkins <laughs> I got um, debates of Christopher Hitchens losing debate I got debates of Muslims losing in debate I got debates of Christians always winning in debate, and will always win. 
You know why Christianity always wins? I'm going to tell you. It has to do with truth. Because if you get truth and you crush it to the earth, let's say you got truth and you just crushed it into the earth, you know what's going to happen? It will rise again. Truth crushed to the earth will rise again, and no lie will live forever. God bless you guys. Have a great week.